Uh, good morning, good people. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Mr. Makaneta. I'm going to teach you now financial mathematics at uh, grade 12. And I just want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you. If you have any question, please feel free at any time to ask. And of course, uh, this, I hope that this is going to be an exciting lesson on finance as I've already indicated. And of course, without any waste of time, I'm just going to zoom directly into the first uh, uh, situation that we need to look at. We have got a problem here where Lesejo buys a car, which is worth 385,000 rents. And this car is bought in 2020 and the question that must be answered is what will be the value of the car at the end of uh, six years, meaning at the end of 2026. 20, and this, of course, has to be calculated if the car depreciates at 6% uh, per annum uh, on straight line uh, depreciation. And I think that you know that the uh, finance goes a long way where we have got, uh, you know, uh, different interest rates that we look at, uh, be it simple interest or, or compound interest. And of course, we also have uh, the formula, uh, you know, to calculate. I'm sure that by now, learners should be well aware of the different uh, types of formulae that need to be used, especially when you calculate the value of the car that depreciates. We know that unlike the house, the value of the car will always uh, depreciate after a couple of years. So now in this case, we know that Lesihu buys a car for the value of 385,000 rands this year, 2020. And of course, by the end of 2026, it is expected that the value will be less than 385,000 rands because this, the value simply depreciates. So I want us to zoom directly into this problem and I hope that as you prepare yourselves for the final uh, exams in the next few uh, months or in the next few weeks rather, can we find a way to calculate the value Let's calculate now the value of uh, the car after a couple of years. And I hope that uh, we are going to make sure that uh, participation becomes uh, compulsory. If you have a question, please feel free at any time to raise a hand. So uh, without wasting any time, I'm just going to zoom directly into the different methods that you can use. And one of the methods, of course, will be to look at the what is given and what needs to be calculated. And of course, we can already tell that we are given the principal value, which is now at 385,000 rents, but we are also given the interest. The car, as we are told, it depreciates at 6% per annum, uh, which is now your interest uh, that is given. But again, we are also given the number of years. Uh, if you look at uh, the car, which was bought now in 2020, uh, by 2026, it will be exactly six years. So after six years, then this means that the value of N will be six. So it's very important to identify the different uh, given values before you can even attempt to answer the question. Because once you once you, you know the, the given data there or the information that is provided, then it will be easier for you to answer the question. So I think that is what is important in this case. Answer, before you can answer the question, check what is it that is given, but also try to figure out what is it that the question wants you to answer? What exactly is it that is needed? So in this case, we want the value of the car. So what will be the value, the, meaning that will be A. So A 
is our unknown. So unknown will be A there, which we need to, which we need to find. And like I said, what is very key here is that we demonstrate that when you look at a depreciation, when the value of the car depreciates, it means you are going to subtract something there. Money will be subtracted from 385,000. So that is why we have the equation A is equal to P open bracket one minus I N. So the negative there simply means we are working with a depreciation. The value is going to decrease. There are times when you have a formula where you've got plus. And of course, this is different in this case. A is equal to P open bracket one minus I N. And of course, as I've already indicated to you, a P is simply our principal value or the initial value that we start with, meaning that is the value that you used or the value of the car when you bought it for the first time. This was the value. So that's, that's the P. And of course, the I is the interest uh, rate. And of course, N being the number of uh, years in this case. Now, remember, what is also important is to make sure that you convert your interest uh, carefully. There are learners who sometimes make a mistake where they just decide to put six instead of uh, 0, 0,06. Uh, remember that uh, the interest, always you have to divide that by 100. So uh, the 6%, this is the same as six out of 100. And of course this is 0, 0,06. 0, 06. That is the interest rate. And of course, the number of years has upset already. Uh, it's six. So you have six years. Now you can substitute your the different values. And of course, what is important is that you need to apply both mass, the 0 0.06 multiplied by six. And of course, this will give you uh, a figure there and of course if you subtract that from one you get 0, 0.64 so therefore if you multiply 0, 0.64 by 385,000 pardon me the value here uh, it's uh, 385,000 I think there's just a typing error there there's a zero that you need to add just to ensure that it's 385,000 and if you multiply 385,000 rents by 0, 0,64, what do you get? I'm sure you'll see that if you take a 0, 0,64 and you multiply that by 385,000 rents, you are definitely going to get 246,000 rents and uh, 400 rents. So 246,000 400 rents. So it's 246,000 rents there, as well as 400 rents. So that will be the value of the car after six years. So you can tell that the car has simply, uh, you know, depreciated. So the value of the car is no longer uh, the same because it is now depreciated. So uh, please bear in mind that you can always use the correct formula. So usually you'll be given the different uh, formula sheet or a sheet for different formulas there, and you can be able to use it. So please uh, make sure at all times that you select the correct one, because in this case, we are subtracting. So we are now going to uh, proceed with our lesson, but just before we do so, I just wanted to re recap, uh, make sure that you look at the given values. What is very key here is that you are given the value of a, a P, which is the original amount of the car. And you need to find the A value there, which will be the final amount. So in other words, after six years, uh, the final amount has to be calculated. And remember, that when the car depreciates at any percentage, 
especially straight line uh, depreciation. Uh, that, that is the formula that we use. A into, I mean, A is equal to P into one minus I N, and where I stands for the interest rates, and uh, N stands for the number of years. And of course, this can simply go a long way. Uh, we can certainly go a long way to make sure that we calculate correctly. So if there's any question on this uh, uh, particular ex activity, uh, please feel free at any time to, to make sure that you ask so that we don't leave you behind. Be that as it may, I'm just going to also now proceed to the next uh, one where we will also look at uh, calculating uh, the value. What will be the value of the car? Uh, of course, this we have done already. Now we want to know uh, what will be the value of the same car now uh, at the end of uh, 2026 if the car depreciates at 6% per annum reducing balance depreciation. So you need to differentiate between the reducing balance depreciation as well as the straight line depreciation. So I, I wanted to bring to your attention the two different concepts there. The first one being the straight line depreciation. And of course, we have looked at this uh, straight line depreciation just to make sure that we calculate the value of the car at the end of the six year period. But right now, I want us to also look at this uh, value. Uh, what will be the value of the car at the end of 2026? But at the same time, when we look at the car which depreciates at 6% per annum, reducing balance depreciation. I'll be happy if you can take the time to, to work this out. And of course, we can look at the answer there. What will be, or what will rather be the value of the car at the end of the year 2026, if the car depreciates at 6% per annum, reducing balance depreciation. So there's a, there's a difference, remember that this can be the same as uh, the straight line uh, depreciation. This cannot be the same. So this will rather be a different approach. So you need to remember the key tenants of the straight line depreciation together with the reducing balance depreciation. So I hope that wherever you are, you can be able to now take a pen and a paper and calculate the new value of the car at the end of 2026, when the car depreciates at 6% per annum. So you can see, you can tell that the interest is still the same. The only difference this time is that you are now focusing on the reducing balance depreciation. So remember that there's a difference and I hope that you can be able to explain the difference between the two, the reducing balance depreciation as well as the straight line. So those are the two uh, concepts which are not uh, the same. And of course, they can not be calculated in the same way as well. All right, so I hope that it makes sense. The reducing balance uh, uh, depreciation and usually you look at the cost of the original value of the asset and of course you can take any other uh, uh, method into consideration. So the asset is now going to depreciate and of course you are looking at the original amount of 385,000. So this will be different from the one that we just did. So just to recap, that's the same car now, which was bought in 2020 for the amount of 385,000 rents. And of course, we are looking at the value of the car at the end of 2026 using two different methods. We've already used the first one there, which is the straight line uh, depreciation. 
and now is the time for us to use the second one, which is the reducing uh, uh, balance uh, depreciation. And of course, without any waste of time, we can zoom now directly into the second one. So you can see the equations are not the same. So look at the, the difference. We have the second equation here, which is A is equal to P open bracket one minus I to the power of N. So one common feature between the two is that you still have the negative sign. And the negative sign simply means when you see the subtraction sign at all times, this simply means you are going to reduce your amount. Uh, you know, you are subtracting something from the original amount. Therefore, the difference with this, you can see that we now have uh, A equal to P open bracket, one minus I and close bracket to the power of N. So this one is different in a sense that you ha now have the power, the exponent N instead of the, you know, the N being or the I being the coefficient of N in the original uh, question. So in this case, this is the equation or the right equation rather, which you need to, to use. I'm just going to show you the difference. And of course you can tell that with the straight line, you simply have the I as the coefficient of N. This therefore means that you are looking at the straight line depreciation. And of course, you can tell that the amount was 246,400. But the difference in this case, there will be an exponent there. So you can tell that if you subtract a, a, a 0, 0.06 from 1, you get 0, 0.94. And of course, if you multiply 0, 0.94 by itself about five times there, then you'll be able to to, to multiply the answer with uh, 385,000 to get the depreciated amount. So at the end of the six year period, at the end of the six year period, the amount that we're looking at now will be 265,599 rands and 87 cents. So it's 265,599 rent and 87 cents. So you can see that the value, when you use the reducing method, it will not be the same as the straight line depreciation. With the straight line depreciation, the amount is lesser than the reducing balance uh, depreciation. And what is the reason for this? Of course, the reason for this is the, can be found in the expression of our formula where n becomes now the exponent. And of course, you just subtract the interest from one. Remember as always, uh, 0, 0.06 there simply means you have now uh, divided six by, by 100. And once again, it's very important to note what is given. That is the key, uh, you know, the key feature of answering your various mathematical problems, especially when it comes to finance. Very important, ensure that you find out what is given and what is not given. In this case, we are given P, which is the principal amount of the car at the beginning of the year or, or, or at the beginning of the installment. If you are going to buy the car, then the total value will be 385,000. But of course, after, a period of six years, the car depreciates and you now have the different value. So I wanted you this morning to look at the different ways of calculating the value of the car after a particular period, especially when you use the different uh, methods. The first one being the straight line depreciation and the second one being the reducing balance depreciation. So you can already tell that the two will not give you the same answer. There, there are differences between the two. And of course, this goes a, a long way in answering some of the, the questions that we've 
asked ourselves this morning. So the value of the car will depreciate. It will be 265,599 rents and 89 cents. I hope that we are on track now. Uh, I'm just going to now find a way to also give you an activity. Let's look at the next activity where Loiso enters into a five-year higher purchase agreement to buy a computer for an amount of 8,900 rands. And in this case, the interest is quoted as 11% per annum, and it is based on simple interest. What we need to now find out, or the question that must be answered now, is that we need to calculate the required monthly payment for this contract. We know from time to time people enter into higher purchase agreement. We have defined, I'm sure in your different lessons, higher purchase has been uh, defined, I believe since grade 10. When you were in grade 10, a higher purchase agreement was uh, defined. Uh, you know, people enter into this kind of uh, agreement all the time whether you buy a fridge or, or a bed or a washing machine, anything that requires you to enter into higher purchase. And of course, Loiso in this case enters into this uh, five year higher purchase. So meaning that uh, Loiso has to pay the, for his computer after five years, he must finish uh, paying the payment of this, uh, particular purchase. And of course, we can see that the original amount of the computer is 8,900 rents. Now, if the interest is quoted as 11% per annum, and of course, it is based on simple interest, what will be the monthly payment for this contract? So it is very important to look at the monthly uh, payment for any contract what will be the monthly payment. And I appreciate if we can engage in this lesson and you know, if you are working it out somewhere there and let's find a way to carry on. So we are now going to look at the higher purchase, which is uh, the agreement that Loiso has entered into for a period of uh, five years with the original amount. So once again, just like we did with the previous examples, it's very important to identify the given information. So data is very important. So in this case, we are going to collect data just as you would have done when you look at the, you know, the data handling and so on and how you handle your data. Although this is finance, but data is very important to handle. So in this case, we need to look at the given information. And the first one is the primary or the original amount of 8,900 rents. That is what is given. But at the same time, we're also given the number of years. So N is the number of years, which is given as five. And of course, I is the interest. And in this case, the interest is given as 11% per annum. Now we need to be able to use this uh, information that is given to find the different uh, 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 monthly payment for this contract. How much will the contract cost per month? So let us find a way, let us now find out how much will Loiso pay every month in relation to this particular contract. Right, uh, we are obviously going to use the correct formula. You can see that uh, if we use A is equal to P into one plus I N, this is basically the formula to calculate simple interest or, 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 or to calculate any value accumulated amount using a simple interest. Remember, this is different from the one of compound interest in a sense that with a compound interest, you'll have the N 
as an exponent, but in this case, n is just uh, the coefficient of i, and uh, th therefore that explains the simple interest approach. Remember, when we started with this question, we were given, we were told that the interest is coded as 11% per annum on simple interest. So it's very important to always check whether your calculation will involve simple interest approach or compound interest. Remember the interest which is compounded uh, annually and so on. But in this case, the interest is, co is not compounded. So we are working only with a simple interest, which will be far less than the compound interest. Now, the addition sign, remember when we were looking at the value of the car after six years, we had a minus sign here. Remember that. So in this case, we have a plus sign. The plus sign simply means we are working with a, a value that is going to increase. So in other words, uh, you know, when you buy uh, some of these uh, uh, items on higher patches, after a couple of years, the value becomes more than the original value. In fact, you'll pay more than what you would have paid. For instance, if you had paid a cash amount on this uh, uh, computer. So of course you can tell that uh, Lois in this case, uh, the amount of the computer that Lois is buying has now increased from 8,900 rands. It has now increased to 13,795 rands. And, and what is the cause of this? The cause of this is the interest that Loiso pays and the interest is uh, 6%, not 6%, rather uh, 11%. So you can tell that when you divide 11 by, by 100, by 100, you get 0, 0,11. And of course, we have already spoken about the number of years, and in this case, the number of years is five. So we have five years but we also have the interest rate of 11%. Uh, and once you have those two together with the principal amount or the original amount of 8,900, then you can put this into your formula and you can be able to calculate the accumulated amount. So the accumulated amount will now be 13,795 rent. So though that is the accumulated amount after a period of five years. But in order to get the monthly payment, at this point, once you have calculated the, the uh, amount after five years, you need to remember that there's a way to calculate the monthly payment. And what do you do? You are now going to take five years. Remember, this is five years, and you multiply by 12. Why do you multiply five by 12? Remember, we want to know how many months are there in five years. So to get the number of months in five years, because you, uh, Loiso will be paying the monthly installment. So to get, or to find out rather how many months are there within a period of five years. So five years is the same as 60 months, or there are 60 months in five years. And how do you get that? You multiply five by 12. So you take the five years, you multiply that by 12 months, and this gives you 60 months. So in other words, you, take, you will divide your accumulated amount of 13,795, and then you'll divide that by 60. And if you divide 13,795 by 60, you get 229 rent and 92 cents. So basically, you will be able to pay 229 rent and 92 cents per month for a period of five years. So it sounds very, uh, it's a small amount. If you're looking at it, uh, this is of course, when in relation to higher patches. So if you 
buy this particular uh, a laptop or, or computer for a, an amount of 8,900 rands. By the end of five years, you shall have paid 13,795 rands. So this will, this will be 13,795 rents. So of course, this simply means, this simply means that uh, your higher purchase will lead to a bigger amount. So this amount will increase by the end of the five year period. Although you'll be paying less, but the amount will definitely increase after the end of a, a five-year period. And so I hope that it makes sense once again, as we carry on to investigate other challenges, which we need to look at in relation to the higher purchase, but also the interest, which is going to be utilized. Can we now carry on to the next one? Let's get on to the next one. And of course, we look at uh, the investment that is being made uh, by Martin. Uh, Martin invests 12,500 rents for a period of five years. And now we need to look at the manner in which this will unfold because if you look at the investment that Martin makes, it is for a five-year period. And the interest that is uh, calculated there will be 12% per annum, compounded monthly for the first two years. So there are two different categories here. So this uh, interest rate of 12% per annum will be compounded on a monthly basis just for the first two years. So in other words, the first two years of the five years. And the other three years will be now 14% per annum, which is compounded semi-annually. So you must underline the word semi-annually for the next three years. So how much will Martin receive in total after a period of five years? So without any waste of time, I want to explain thoroughly the difference between the two interests. You can tell that we are now given several uh, information. Let's start with uh, the 12,500, that's the principal amount. So this is an am the amount which Martin invests with a particular financial institution and his in investment will run for a period of five years. So meaning that the investment will mature after a period of five years. Okay, now there are two, the investment is subdivided into two. The first one is that it, it will be invested at 12%, which will be compounded monthly. When we say that uh, interest will be compounded monthly. We mean that, uh, you know, it will increase on a monthly basis. In other words, you will charge interest every month and the next month you will charge interest on interest. In other words, uh, you know, you have the first interest which is charged uh, in the first month. The second month, you also have another interest which is compounded. It's not, in, it's not like simple interest. So it will not be the equal. So the amount of interest that will be charged on a monthly basis will not be the same. It will be different. Uh, you know, it will increase because it will be compounded on a monthly basis. But this happens only for the first two years. So for the first two years, the interest of 12% is calculated uh, monthly you know, uh, compounded. And of course, after two years now, we have, we are adding 2% uh, there. You'll have 14% uh, of interest there per annum, which is, 
compounded semi-annually. So when we say semi-annually, it means it will be compounded every six months. That is what it's, it, it means. The word semi-annually, uh, semi means half, and of course, annually means uh, uh, per year. So half a year. So half a year in this case will be the same as six months. So you must be able to analyze your question first before you can be able to answer. It's very important that before you can answer any question, make sure that uh, you know you you'll be able to analyze. So the word semi-annual or semi-annual simply means that uh, you know that interest will be charged at least twice each year, or rather uh, once every six months. So it will be six months and six months to complete the year. So meaning that typically uh, it will be paid or it will be charged rather once every six months. And that is what it means. So interest will be charged only twice. So it will take place twice. Whereas the original one, the 12% per annum, which is compounded monthly for the first two years, it means that one will be charged every month. All right, so it will be compounded for two, for two years. So for 24 months, every month, there will be interest added to the investment. So you can tell that we've got two separate sets there of uh, interest. So now, what do we do now? Now that we, we know that uh, uh, we have defined or we have, uh, we have tried to understand the meaning of the two separate uh, years, the first two years and the next uh, three years, which completes the five-year period. The key question now that must be answered is how much will Martin receive in total after five years. So once you have been able to understand this question, then you know that Martin will receive uh, money after five years. So basically you are going to check how much will that be in two years time ordinarily and how much will that be, the amount be after three years. So ordinarily you would have to look at the first two years and, and look at the last uh, three years just to check the performance of this particular uh, investment in relation to the interest that will be added. So we all also know that uh, when interest is going to be added to one's investment, this simply means the amount is going to increase. So the expectation that we have now is that the amount of 12,500 rands, which has been invested by Martin will increase after a period of five years based on the 12% per annum, which is compounded monthly for the first two years and the 14% per annum, which is now compounded semi-annually for the next three years. Now let's go and check how much will Martin receive after five years. Of course, we are working now with compound interest. The previous example I've worked with a simple interest and I've been able to demonstrate that the plus sign here simply means there's going to be money added to your investment. But the difference between this formula and the previous one that we've used is that in this formula, you have A is equal to P into one plus I, close bracket, exponent N. Now, what is the difference between this formula and the previous one that we've used for simple interest? If you go back to the one of simple interest, you will recall that the N was inside the bracket. Now that is the difference. When it comes to simple interest, this is the formula 
that you have to use. So never ever confuse the two. And of course, when it comes to the compound interest, it will be a different story altogether. Your N becomes now the exponent, just as we have done here. So N is now our exponent. And you can tell that the original amount that was uh, invested, of course, was 12,500 rands. I think uh, let, let's rather convert that to, I'm just showing, demonstrating here that uh, 125,000 rents. So I think that there's been a, 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 a replacement of a zero there if you look at the first one. So it should actually be uh, 125,000 rents. But of course, even with the same 12,500 rents, you just put it as P and then you go into the next one there and of course you've got your interest remember that the interest in the first interest there are two categories now that you can see what i'm talking about here there are two uh, different uh, you know intervals the first interval is the two years remember the two years where the interest is compounded uh, monthly you know in other words every year uh, you know, consists of 12 months. So if you look at the interest, rather, we are dividing 0 0.12 by 12. All right. So basically, that is what you need to do to divide 0 0.12. Why 0 0.12? That's simply because the interest is 12%. So 12% is the same as 12 out of 100, which is 0 0.12 and you divide this by 12 months. Why? Because a year consists of 12 months. And now let's look at the exponent now. The exponent becomes two multiplied by 12. Now, why do we multiply two by 12? This simply means we have two years. In two years, the, how many months are there? There should be 24 months. And how do you calculate that? You, you simply multiply two, which stands for two years there, and then you multiply that by 12. Every year consists of 12 months. So therefore, you will have 24 months. That is the first period there. And remember, why do we have 24 months? That's because in each and every month, interest will be added, you know, or interest will be compounded on a monthly basis. So that gives you 24 months. And of course, you come to the second one where you also use the formula there. 1 into 1 plus 0, 0,14. This simply stands for the second uh, interval now where 14% is used to calculate the amount of your investment for the next three years. Now remember, you divide by 2. Why do you divide by 2? This simply means you divide by two because interest, as I've said initially, will be charged only two times every six months. Remember when we said it will be compounded semi-annually. So semi-annually for three years. So semi-annually, meaning that semi simply means half. So there are two halves in a year, the first six months and the second. All right, so it will be charged every six months. So that is why you divide your 0 0.14 by 2. And of course, if you look at the exponent now, your n, the number of years, it will be now the 3 years. In 3 years, then you multiply by 2. It means in, uh, in 3 years, uh, the interest will be charged 6 times then. Because in one year, it is done semi-annually, so every six months. So in a year, interest is now charged uh, twice. So if it's three years, if it's just, if interest is charged uh, twice in a year, then in two years, it will be four times. In three years, it will be six times, and so on as you proceed. So you can tell now that once you have done your calculations there, and of course, uh, 
uh, 0 0.12 uh, there divided by 12, which is 0 0.1, 0 0.01 rather, and then you add the one you, to get 1.01. And this is to the power 24. So that's 24 months and 1.07 to the power six. So that's six months. Remember that it will be charged every, twice a year. So of course it will be six times. And once you have calculated, then you'll be able to tell that your amount will increase rather uh, from the original amount. So basically in this case, we have looked at uh, the primary or the, the initial amount as 125,000. So pardon me for the previous zero there. And of course this amount will now increase to 238,000. 191 and 17 cents. And that's if the original amount was 125,000. I hope that it makes a sense. So basically today we've been able to look at the two different uh, methods of calculating uh, the interest. The first method there was uh, looking at uh, the simple interest and the second one was to look at the, the compound interest. And I hope that this will certainly go a long way to assist in as far as these uh, challenges are concerned. <clears throat> so just to recap once again, this was uh, the first one that we did uh, where we looked at the, the compound, in, the simple interest on a higher purchase agreement and of course, the next one being the compound uh, interest. And rather look at the original amount as 125,000 rents. You can see that it will increase to 238,000 rents. So this will increase because the investment will increase radically when it comes to compound interest. So you can tell that if you multiply 125 by two, it's almost double, uh, 250 then. But uh, in this case, we have 238,000 rents. Now, I want us to zoom now into the next one, a very critical question here, where Mandla opens uh, some accounts at the number of clothing stores where he can spend uh, freely. So Mandla opens uh, accounts at uh, different clothing stores. He gets himself into debt and cannot afford to pay off his accounts. At this point, he owes Markham's 5,000 rents and the store agrees to let him pay the bill at a nominal interest rate of 24%, which is compounded monthly. So once again, before you can even answer the question, before you go to a question, you, you should be able to analyze your given information or what I normally call data. So you collect the information and look at what is given and what is uh, outstanding there. So we know at this point that uh, Markham owes 5,000 rents to, I'm talking about Mandla rather, Mandla owes Markham 5,000 rents and the store agrees to let him pay the bill at a nominal interest rate of 24%. And remember, this 24% is compounded on a monthly basis. So every month, interest will be added. Okay. So we want to know uh, that at the end of two years, how much will Mandla owe Markham's? How much amount? But equally, what is the effective rate of interest that Markham's is charging him. We know that the nominal interest rate is 24% compounded monthly, but we also need to know what the effective rate of interest will be. 
which uh, will be charged by Markham's. So basically, you need to go back once again to your understanding of the nominal interest rate together with the effective uh, rate of interest. Again, you need to know what is given there, given that he owes uh, 5,000 rents. And these are the this information that is given. And we should be able to utilize this information to calculate uh, the amount of money which um, will be owed after a period of two years. So remember that two years, uh, that is the N. So this time you are not given the N, which is the number of years, but of course you are given the interest rates to, together with uh, the principal amount. So without wasting time, we are going to look at this. So remember, as I always say, you need to take the time to analyze the question. Analyze the question freely. Information that is necessary has to be gathered. In most cases, this will be figures. So in finance, we work with figures all the time. So. What is important is the amount, which is 5,000 rents, plus the nominal interest rate, which is now 24%. But remember, it is compounded monthly. So this is, compound, uh, this is the interest rate that is compounded on a monthly basis, meaning that interest will be charged on a monthly basis. But also the effective rate of interest which is charged by Malcolm's on the amount that is owed. So these are the two different uh, concepts. And we are going to look at the first one as follows. There's a formula that we need to use. Remember, compound interest all the time, your N value becomes the exponent in this case. So to answer the first question, remember the first question says, how much money will he owe Markham's after two years? So basically, you are looking at calculating now the accumulated amount. And of course, the accumulated amount in this case, we use the correct formula there. A is equal to P, open bracket, one plus I, close bracket to the power of N. So N is our exponent. And of course, it stands for the number of years. But you are going to realize, or you have already noticed that the amount is compounded on a monthly basis. We are talking here about interest. So that is why you are going to multiply two by 12 because in a year, there are 12 months. So in two years, there will be 24 months. So you, you take the two and you multiply that by, by 12 because in one year, there's 12 months. So if it's two years, then it will be 24 months. So this 24 exponent 24 year simply means 24 months. That is what it means. And of course, you take the principal amount, which is 5,000 rands, open bracket into one plus the 24% uh, interest, uh, you know, the nominal interest rate is 24%, as you have seen in the, in the uh, statement. And that is why we put it as 0, uh, 0,24 there divided by 12. Uh, where do we get the 0 0.24 from? Once again, you divide 24 by 100. So you need to know by now that any percentage, 24% simply means 24 out of 100. And of course, this is where we get the 0, 0,24. And thereafter, you divide it by 12. Why do you divide by 12? Because as you can see in the statement, this nominal interest rate is compounded monthly. So how many years are there in a year? So there are 12, I mean, how many months are there in a year? there are 12 months in a year. That is why we divide this uh, interest rate by 12. And of course, 
uh, if you divide 0 0.24 by 12, you get 0 0.02. And if you add one there, then you have 1.02. So basically that is what we have. And then 1.02 to the power of 24, and then of course multiplied by 5,000, you get 8,042 rands and 19 cents. So 8,042 rands and 19 cents. That will be the accumulated amount. So this basically means that at the end of five years, in fact, uh, at the end of uh, two years rather, the amount of money which uh, Mandela will owe to Markham's will be 8,000 and 42 rents and 19 cents. So that will be the amount which is owed by Mandla. So Mandla will basically owe 8,042 rents and 19 cents. So now the second question that has to be grappled with is the now to calculate the effective rate of interest which uh, Markham's is charging it. So we are now going to use what we have. Again, you need to tell that at the end of the two year period, what will be the effective rate of interest that Markham's will charge Mandla. So we want to know the effective rate of interest. Remember, we have a formula for that to calculate the effective rate of interest. And this is the formula that we use. Can you see the formula there on the screen? One plus I is equal to one plus I to the power M over M, all to the power of M. So you open the bracket there, and then one plus the interest to the power of M there, and of course, uh, you, you calculate uh, your, 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 your interest there. But what does the M stand for? Basically, this stands for, you know, the, the months, the 12 month uh, period. So that is 12 months. And of course, remember that we also had 24% uh, of the nominal interest rate. So we are going to use the nominal interest rate to find the effective rate of interest. So the nominal one is 24%, as you know. And of course, if you divide 24 by 100, you get 0 0,24. And of course, you divide everything by 12 months, and then even 12 months there. And that will mean that where does the the minus one come from, we simply transpose the positive one here from the left hand side to the right hand side. So it will change the sign and become a negative. So you have negative one here. And basically, once you, at this point, this we have done before, if you divide 0 0.24 by 12, and of course you get uh, 0 0.24, uh, 0 0.02. All right. So if you divide 0 0.24 by 12 months there, you get 0 0.02. And of course, if you add 1, then you have got 1,02. And then, of course, you can uh, bring that to the exponent of 12. And then once you subtract 1, if in fact, when you bring that to the exponent of uh, 12, uh, after adding the one there, you will get 1, uh, 268241. It's a long number there. It's a long decimal, 1,268241. And then when you subtract one, you'll be left with 0, 0,268241. It should be clear at this point that when you convert this to a percentage, you simply multiply by 100. So if you multiply 0, 0.2682241 by 100, then you will get 
26.82%. So basically that is what you have, 26.82%. That will be the actual effective rate of interest which will be charged by Markham's. So Markham's will be charging 26.82%. Uh, that will be the amount which will be charged. So remember, always when you have 26.82%, this simply means you are multiplying uh, that by the original amount as well. So this becomes 0 0.268, all right? So of course, this means that the original amount of uh, 5,000 rands has now increased. It has now increased. So basically that is the effective rate of uh, interest. And I do hope that you have been able to benefit from this uh, lesson. And of course, that would have been my last uh, point of departure. I actually thought this was uh, uh, going to be a one hour lesson. And uh, I'm not so sure whether the host may want me to recap on the lesson that I've done from the beginning up until now. Uh, if that is the case, maybe we can just go back and look at the initial a value that we calculated where let's say who bought a car. So in, in as far as these uh, concepts are concerned, when you buy a car, you'll always find a way of increasing, you know, uh, your installment. But of course, after a couple of years, the value of your initial uh, investment or rather not, not an investment per se, but your your value, the value of your your car will depreciate. So we know that a car will depreciate in value uh, as opposed to a house, which uh, actually appreciates in value. So when you buy a car, which is worth uh, 385,000 rents, you simply have to look at uh, the percentage uh, that is given at any particular given moment. And in this case, what we uh, were talking about, we spoke about the straight line depreciation. And of course, the straight line depreciation is different from the other forms. The reducing balance, for instance, is different from the straight line depreciation in a sense that when you look at the straight line, you have got your N next to the I. So although you are going to subtract uh, the I N there, but your N, which is the number of years, is just next to the, you multiply that by the interest, unlike the reducing balance, where the N becomes now your exponent. So to get to the next uh, value, of course, you use the given value of uh, 385,000 rents, and then you multiply that with the interest or the product of the interest and the number of years, both of which are subtracted from the original one. And of course, once you multiply 385,000 by 0 0.64, you'll definitely get 246,400. And this simply means that you are going to pay less if you are, have to now buy the car after six years, or if you want to sell it. If you want to sell the car after this period, this car which, whose value was 385,000 will now be 246,400. So this means it has now uh, depreciated in its value. So we need to use this all the time so that we are able to understand the terrain in relation to the mathematics of finance. Uh, you know, this will 
hopefully help a lot, uh, you know, for those students who may want to pursue a degree in uh, finance or a degree in uh, mathematics or finance. Uh, you have to remember that these things, the, the formula is very important. Although we will give you uh, the sheet, you will receive the sheet for different formula in, in, the, in your exam. But of course, it's very important to know how to calculate this particular uh, uh, accumulated amount rather. So you will accumulate a depreciation amount, of course, which is now uh, 246,400. I hope that makes sense. Right. Uh, what is important is also to look at uh, the what uh, the reducing uh, balance depreciation will be when we look at the same amount. So basically, looking at the same amount, the difference in this case will be the formula that you apply. So you are looking at the two different uh, 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 values. You know, the first one, if it depreciates at 6% uh, per annum, reducing balance uh, depreciation, it will be different from the straight line uh, depreciation. The straight line depreciation, the amount will be 246,400. And of course, the reducing balance depreciation will be 265,599 rands and 87 uh, cents. So the two, as you can see, there are advantages and disadvantages. The, the straight line, it means the amount will reduce drastically compared to the reducing balance uh, depreciation. So whenever you buy a car, then uh, you know you need to look at those, uh, the two types of, uh, of, of balance uh, depreciations. And of course, I've also spoken about the higher purchase agreement where you take something on, they normally call it an installment. It means that you will pay uh, an installment. Some uh, uh, stores can give you a an item. Uh, you know, you don't even pay a deposit. Like in this case, if you look at uh, Loiso, uh, Loiso never paid a, a deposit. Uh, some higher purchase agreements, you need to pay a deposit, which can be subtracted from the original amount. But in this case, there was no uh, deposit amount. So you had to now pay, uh, you know, the 8,900 rents, uh, you know, it had to be, uh, you know, paid fully, uh, but on a monthly basis. Remember that uh, the five uh, year higher purchase simply means uh, the amount will increase after five years. If you look at the 11% per annum, which is uh, simple interest. But at the same time, the amount will be paid uh, monthly. So first and foremost, you calculate how much will the uh, amount be after five years. When you look at the simple interest formula, and we found that the amount will be 13,795,000, uh, sorry, 13,795 friends. So it's 13,795 rents. And of course, if you divide this amount by the number of months in a five year period, remember that one year consists of 12 months. And so five years will have 60 months. So that is why you divide by 60 months. And of course, this is how it is done. Uh, you know, uh, in terms of even people who purchase any other item, the higher purchase, if it is simple interest, you will probably pay less than when it is compound uh, interest. So in this case, the simple interest formula was used and that is, it is for this reason that we are now paying an amount 
or an, a monthly payment of 225, 229 rands and 92 cents. And of course, this uh, can be paid for a period of 60 months. So after 60 months, the amount will come to 13,795. So the 8,900 rands will increase to 13,795 rather. So this was simple interest, which compared to compound interest. Remember in this case, when Martin invested 125,000 for five years, it was at 12% per annum. So there were two periods there, the first two, two years, and the last three years. And in the first two years, as you can see, the amount of interest there is 12% per annum, which is compounded on a monthly basis. So if it is two years, then it means it will be compounded for 24 months. But again, 14% per annum compounded semi-annually. And as I've already said, the concept semi-annually simply means it's every six months. So it's semi-annually, it's twice a year. So if it is twice a year, then it means uh, when it is three years, then it will be six times. Because in one year, it's two times. Then in, in six years, there it will be, in fact, it's, it's in three years time, it will be six times. So it will be compounded uh, semi-annually. And we have been able to tell that it will drastically increase in relation to the original amount. But then again, the one that we've just done now uh, where Mandla opens a clothing account, and of course, he had to pay 5,000 rents on a store. You know, uh, the nominal interest rate is given as 24%, which is compounded uh, monthly once again. So remember, uh, what is given is very important to uh, that we, we use uh, the 5,000 rands to calculate the money that he will owe after a period of two years. So two years, that is your N value there. And then interest, 24%. And it is for this reason that we have used the compound interest formula. We call this usually the compound interest formula because uh, you know uh, it can be used to find uh, you know, a compound interest or to find the accumulated amount as well. You know, you can find the accumulated amount and in this case, 5,000 multiplied by 1,2 or 1,02 to the power of 24. So after two years, the amount that Mandla will have to pay to Markham's will be 8,042 rents and 19 cents. And of course, we said that we must also look at uh, the effective rate uh, of interest, which we need to calculate. And of course, we have now looked at uh, the effective rate of interest, which uh, simply means you look at the formula. So this is basically the formula that we have used for the effective rate of uh, interest. So the, basically when you use this formula, you need to be able to co uh, simplify uh, or, or substitute correctly. And of course, uh, this also means you dividing the interest by 12. And of course, the other one will be to ensure that we are able to calculate this particular uh, amount where you multiply 0 0.2682 by 100 to get 26,82. So 26,82 will be your percentage. And of course, that will be the case. So I hope that 
this has been able to make a lot of sense for all of us. And of course, this is a financial mathematics uh, grade 12. So now, uh, once again, I just want to reiterate, I just want to, 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 to reiterate the importance of uh, knowing your formula. So the formula for different uh, categories, when you uh, find any questions, you need to be able to know that uh, you know the right formula can go a long way to assist. But before you can even look at the formula, you need to to ensure that uh, you know you identify the information that is given, and of course, you can be able to find what is missing. So before you can even attempt to answer the question, please make sure that you look at the information that is given. And you know, you can be able to formulate a question for yourself even before you can answer the given question. You know, by just formulating, by just looking at the given data, you can already tell what is missing there and you know, what needs to be calculated long before you can look at the actual question. So before you can answer the question, just focus on analyzing the given information. And I do hope that this will certainly go a long way to assist you as you prepare for your exams. And I hope that uh, we can practically bring our lesson to an end at this point. Just to indicate and to reiterate once again that you know these lessons are brought to you by the Africa Teen Geeks uh, STEM Digital School in partnership with uh, the Sustol Foundation. And of course, until we can meet uh, in the next lesson, uh, thank you very much indeed.